disease. The report based on medical aid schemes are showing that people consult physicians only four times a year and see specialists only once a year. Now this makes it very hard for doctors and specialists to intervene on these diseases. However, the trend showing hospital admission is very slow but stable. It is believed that a lot of uh, people could be, uh, or a lot rather can be done to change the situation, but the question is, how? Now for more on this, we are joined by Head of Benefit and Risk at Healthcare Funders, Dr. Rajesh Patel. Doctor, good morning and welcome to AM News. Good morning to you. Morning to you Talk yes. to me about this, uh, uh, the study that has been done. How does it affect the, the production input in South Africa? Well, there is a rising trend of chronic disease that's taking place in the country, not just in the medical scheme and private sector environment. It's also in the public sector environment amongst the indigent as well. So as it affects productivity, any increase in burden of disease is going to affect productivity. More people need to go for care, more complications, more people are going to stay away from work. So definitely productivity is going to be affected. Secondly, cost of the productivity is going to increase because more money would be needed for the care itself and for things like medical aid contributions, etc., those would be going up because of the additional care needed. Is the research a reflection of the South African's uh, health, health population in general or not? No and yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no in the sense that this was a study of quality of care that's bought by medical schemes in which the finding was the increase in the burden of disease. But bear in mind, it's just in the private sector. However, if you've listened to the Department of Health, the Minister of Health, they all talked about the growing problem of non-communicable diseases, and they need to do a lot more in that area. But what the is problem. the situation like in South Africa? Is, is, it, is, it, is it crisis proportions at this stage, or am, am I uh, an alarmist? <laughs> uh, no, I think the moment you see a rising trend, you should do something about it immediately and not mm -hmm. wait like we had the problem with the HIV. Mm -hmm. uh, it is growing problem, there's no doubt about it. And the longer we wait to do something about it, the problem only gets worse and it's an exponential growth anyway. What so the, are the causes though, doctor? Is, is it just lifestyle or what is it? Well, the major ones like diabetes, high blood pressure, etc., is lifestyle. Uh, people are, more, are, are less active these days. Mm -hmm. The diets are different, less activity around, etc. Obviously, obesity is on the rise, including amongst the juveniles and the young, etc. So those are definitely going to contribute to the increasing high blood pressure, diabetes, coronary artery disease syndromes, etc. Now, there, there must have been a breakdown. Uh, so if we look at gender and we look at age, uh, which uh, is the most likely affected by these chronic diseases? No, the, the, this wasn't looked at in specifically. Mm -hmm. As I said, the prevalence of the disease is measured as one of the components. Overall, the study was to measure the quality of care that medical schemes buy. Mm -hmm. And essentially, the findings are largely, we have a growing chronic burden of disease, but the quality of care in treating those conditions is also somewhat substandard. So literally, this is going to cause an exponential problem down the line if we don't address it quickly enough. Quality of care substandard, what do you mean by that? Well, I think there were, there's a bit of a mismessage uh, that was in the introduction component. Mm -hmm. The four consultations and five consultations shows that medical schemes are not limiting access to patients to get to the doctor. Mm -hmm. But when they get to the doctor, the opportunity is lost to do the treatment as per guidelines. And in our findings, we find that, for example, only about 30 to 40 percent of hypertensive patients have a cholesterol tested, whereas all 100 percent should have themselves tested. And it's not like this denial of benefits. The benefits ex do exist. Mm -hmm. So the take up of those benefits is very low. So yes, you have underdiagnosis of high blood pressure. The trend is also rising. Mm -hmm. But then when it comes to the treatment, the treatment is not necessarily aligned to guidelines. So potential risk downstream is going to be quite high. Mm -hmm. So visiting your doctor four or five times is OK, but it, it, it's it depends. It's not bad at all. It's yeah. actually very good. It depends on what you do with what that visit. What you do with mm -hmm. the, at that visit as well, that's critically important. And, and what the doctor implements. What he implements, but also mm -hmm. remember the individual that's got the disease has a responsibility yes. in making sure if medicine is prescribed, you take that medicine. Mm -hmm. If lifestyle changes is recommended, you follow those recommendations as well. Yes, <laughs> no, it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so are there remedies? <laughs> yes and no. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the remedies firstly is there's a l whole lot of burden of disease that's out there that's going undiagnosed. So yes, we need to do a lot more screening to find the people with the disease. Secondly, we need to try and prevent this disease in the first place. So those lifestyle changes need to start. And not just start when you have the disease, need to start with children at a young age before they even start to become obese. We need to increase activities at those levels, a lot more education in that environment, 
a lot more education of the public, but also of the doctors in terms of what needs to be done for those diseases and how you reduce the burden. Now, that. isn't the picture a little bit skewed in terms of the study? Because you only look at uh, private medical schemes. What about the public, public health? There, there, there's probably a plethora of information there. There it definitely mm -hmm. is. As I said, this was more because of our uh, exposure to the private mm -hmm. medical scheme environment, and that's where we operate right now. The public sector is definitely concerned about non-communicable disease. Department of Health has got a whole department looking at non-communicable diseases, and they do collect a lot of data there as well. Mm -hmm. you know. So where to from here now, after the study, Doctor? Uh, well, the, the research of the HQA gets presented to the individual medical schemes that have participated, and the medical schemes, with their consultants, their managed care companies, their medical advisors need to sit down, digest this, understand where the problems are, prioritize those problems, mm -hmm. and put in the necessary interventions to try to make a difference. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we have in infinite needs, mm -hmm. we have finite resources, and you've got to make each rent count a lot more. Now, we did talk about the remedies, and, and you gave us a few suggestions, but finally, advice to consumers out there. What should they do, or patients for that matter, uh, to avoid these lifestyle diseases? Eat well, eat correctly, and do lots of exercise. That will go a long way to reduce the burden of diseases as well. <laughs> Tim Besides Noakes. popping the pole. <laughs> Tim Noakes even said it used to stay away from pop and bread. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you believe his diet. I think there's lots of controversies about the diet as well. Doctor, thank you so much for coming through to AM no News and joining thank us you very here. Much. That was excellent. That was Dr. Rajesh Patel, the head of Benefit and Risk at Healthcare Funders.